Welcome back to Owlwood South, where we're going to start a new project today in Universal Audio's Luna. This is a project by Cat Wright, and the song is called By My Side. And you can get the files and follow along by clicking the link in the description of this video. Please hit the subscribe, hit the like, hit the little bell, and you'll get a little notification when we upload uh, new content, which is every couple of days usually. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. I'm going to, first of all, drag these files into the project. I'm going to go ahead and do a little cleanup here and set up the tracks the way I usually like them. I'm going to put the main down at the bottom. Uh, we're going to grab a couple drum tracks and move them up. So I'm going to put the kick in on the top, kick out. Okay, now that I've got those in the order that I usually like them, which is kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom, hat, rack, floor, overheads, room, there's a drum room mono. Uh, two bass, two guitars, all the keys, there's a horn section, uh, and the vocals. Now that we've got those in order, I'm going to do a quick little run through and listen real fast to what we've got going on. I would suggest go ahead and run through that. I've already listened to it one time through. So if, you, if you're following along, definitely go ahead and listen to the whole thing. There's a couple cool changes over in this area over here that we will definitely need to be paying attention to. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to try to figure out a tempo of this uh, for only really the main purpose of uh, delays and time-based effects that I may use. So let's do that right now. What I'm going to do to figure out the time, uh, by the way, Luna defaults to 120, but that's definitely not the tempo of this song. So let's, let's do this. I'm going to come over here to tempo. I just click on this tab here for tempo and automatically the tempo section pops up with a metronome. And I'm going to tap along with the tempo just to sort of quickly figure out a tempo here. Okay, somewhere around 85. Uh, it doesn't really matter because I can tell this is not played to a click track. So it's going to be kind of loose. But that's, uh, that's about where it is. And so let's take all of these tracks, highlight all of them by clicking on the, the top portion. I hold down shift and click the bottom track here and I'm going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to move these over a tiny bit so we get a, a little bit of a pre-roll kind of thing happening. I'm going to turn off snap. It's close, but it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to get the feel of it before doing any processing of time-based um, effects. So let's go ahead and, and color code these. Okay, let's move back to the uh, full zoom out view. That's by, uh, I do that by holding down Control, Option, Command, and the down arrow. Okay, I can tell that this was recorded live in the studio and that is awesome because that gives us a lot of feel uh, during the, the mixing process and that's what we want and especially this kind of music. I would call this sort of a Neo uh, Motown, maybe a Philadelphia sound. It's got the horns in it. Um, so I'm gonna approach it that way, kind of the old school way of, of mixing. And we're gonna do that first by listening to the room Overheads. Those feel like audience perspective because the ride symbol is pretty heavy uh, on the left side. And let's check the phase of these drums before we do anything else. OK, 
Okay, that feels pretty good, actually. That feels right in right in phase. Well, let's check. Then with the, I'll just use a Pro-Q2 right fast and flip the phase of the polarity on the snare while it's playing with the overheads open. Yeah. Those are in phase. Let's check now that the snare bottom is in phase with the top. Let me pull that up a bit. Yes, they are in phase. Good news. Excellent. Let's check the uh, kick drum against the overheads. Like that sound. Let's check that with the audio align right fast. So to do this, I'm going to send uh, the overhead into uh, send number one. I'm going to receive on bus one from being sent to bus one from the overheads. Uh, this is the snare top. That's the wrong channel. I want to send to the kick in, receive here. I'm going to move this noise floor up a bit. Okay, that could be why I didn't like the sound. It's pretty. It's a pretty good ways out from being in alignment, but that doesn't mean it's out of phase. It's the polarity seems to be okay. I'm gonna pull this back a little bit to uh, keep the space in between the two sounds pretty close to where they were. And you can see that they are completely out of phase at the zero samples mark. So. That's why I didn't like that sound. It was actually uh, out of phase. Good. Okay, let's check the phase of the uh, the kick out microphone now. I'm gonna leave the kick in up here. Um, since I know that the kick in is aligned to the overheads, I'm not going to listen to the overheads anymore. I want to make sure that the kick in is aligned uh, with the kick out. So when, the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to send to bus 2 and receive on bus 2 here. And we will check for delay and polarity between these two mics. Yeah, that's good. That's where I, I kind of like that sound. It's out of alignment a little bit time-wise. Uh, and some people, I mean, there's two schools of thought here. You could leave this uh, with that distance in between them. But I tend to like the kick drum to be one solid sound. Uh, not a microphone far away from the uh, input. Uh, there's the time for that, but I don't think this is it. And we may not even use uh, one of those mics. Uh, so I just want to keep them aligned and, uh, and in the correct polarity while we're at it here. Sounds great. Okay, let's move on now to uh, the hi-hat microphone. Let's hear what's going on there. Let's check that one the same way. I'm going to check it against the overheads. So I want to receive on uh, bus one. Okay, I'm going to 
leave that there. Uh, the, the floor toms and the rack tom can be a little, a little hard to do. But let's check that out right fast. I'm gonna come up here to the rack tom. And I'm gonna pull this gain up a bit. Okay, let's check that with the Pro Q2 against the overheads. There's not many times that the uh, the drummer is gonna hit this drum, but I want it to sound in phase, obviously. So I'm gonna little I'm gonna highlight that little section right there so we can keep repeating it. Yeah, that's in phase. That sounds great. I'm gonna do the same thing with the floor tom. I'm just gonna move that Pro Q two over, unsolo the rack. I'm gonna drag this gain up. Yep, that's in phase, so I'm gonna remove that now. All right, let's check the phase on this room mic. I'm just gonna do it real fast with the Pro Q2. Same way I was doing before, just uh, using the polarity switch. Sometimes I find it's easier to um, do this if we mono up each each of the those tracks, the the overheads and the room. Yeah, they sound fine. Let's now do the same with the uh, drum room. It's a mono track. Hmm. That sounds a little wonky. So let's use the auto align again. I'm gonna receive it on bus one because that's where the overheads are being fit, fed to. Okay, let me move this back towards zero. What I'm listening for here is the sound of the cymbals and the low end and see how they're bouncing off each other and interacting. Okay, that one actually sounds better to me. So I'm gonna leave that there now and we're gonna move on to the...